you a bit of guidance about them at a high level, okay? Um, so uh, here we go. Um, uh, guides for message le uh, method selection. I actually provided you a set of slides uh, on this. Uh, these slides are the ones that I'm showing. Um, I think they're in your reference area as well as day five area of that website. So, you know, this gave, I thought this was, there could be worse ways to start to think about this. Look, uh, um, do you have some sort of theory that you are, um, that you have about underlying you either want to explore or that already exists and you want to explicate about behavior in the world. Um, whether it's captured as a system dynamics model, an agent-based model, a discrete event model, a Markov model, do you have some sort of character, structured characterization of that, of that, the dynamics? Um, if you're seeking to know what the underlying situation is, to understand, say, the latent states project and F what if questions. Um, you know, if you have time series for one or more measurements uh, from this model over, so date over time, um, uh, you might really want to consider filtering techniques. Um, these are techniques like uh, particle filtering um, and uh, by extension, uh, particle MCMC um, and, uh, and Kalman filtering as well, although we didn't have time to discuss it, and that it, it's a bit of too much of a dated technique. Um, I don't think it's a great, great match for our needs. Calibration will allow you to match data points over time, um, uh, especially if you have cross-sectional data, um, data points. Um, if you're seeking to estimate poor or unknown parameter values, um, if you want to also estimate latent state, then um, and you have time series data, and uh, if, you're, if you want to treat the parameters as static, PMCMC, you really need, you need to sample the latent state and the static parameters, PMCMC is the game. Um, if you are, have parameters that are changing over time and you want to estimate those and the latent state particle filtering, like Sha Yan used, is a good solution. Um, I would further note that you could do um, particle MCMC or particle filtering with calibration or with, uh, call it calibration, optimization. So, uh, so I'll just say with optimization to minimize discrepancy, okay? Um, that's something which could be readily uh, accomplished um, for many models. Okay, um, if you're see uh, s uh, seeking to probabilistically uh, sample um, uh, from uh, parameter values uh, rather than to, to sort of um, estimate point values as you might with, uh, with the optimization. If you have a deterministic system, MCMC. If you have a stochastic system, PMCMC is advised. If you want to arrive at a single best estimate of values, calibration to data, um, uh, or, or again, this particle filtering with optimization, okay, um, uh, would, would be appropriate there. Um, okay, uh, if you're seeking to inform parameter values based on collected data um, related to specific subpieces of the system, um, parameter estimation, just directly, if you have, if you have information about small subpieces of the system, often through direct translation of that into parameters or what's called backing out, you can engage in parameter estimation and put it into your model. It's not about emergent behavior of the, the model of the system, but rather about particular pieces of the system in isolation. We didn't get a chance, it was part of the, the, my plans, but we didn't get a chance to really go into it, where deep learning fits in. Deep learning is a technique we apply um, uh, in our lab um, in a uh, growing number of cases. It's a really an effective technique when there's a lack of good theory for it and you're seeking to capture empirical regularities that are unlikely to change because of changes 
and the underlying data generating process. If you are seeking to recognize faces or recognize cough sounds or recognize snoring or recognize um, you know, whether, um, uh, whether a, uh, given, a given sound contains a uh, sneeze, something like deep learning is great. Um, those are unlikely to have data generating process changed a lot. If you're seeking to engage in deep learning about health uh, patterns of health linkage between different variables, you have to be very cautious because those might be different in the event of different uh, treatment regimes or, um, or clinical intervention strategies or lifestyle patterns, et cetera. So you've got to be very careful about counting on these empirical regularities staying the same. But for cases where you don't anticipate a change in data generating process and you lack theory, it can be a very effective method. And some of my interests lie in leveraging deep learning for certain areas of the system where the theory is absent um, to supplement simulation modeling. Um, Deep learning is a approach that's very current right now. It's very widely used, and it has a heck of a lot of hardware support behind it, as well as software. Um, you may have heard of DeepMind and TensorFlow and, and uh, tools from, from Google and others to help build what are called deep neural nets or, or deep learning systems. Um, uh, they are very uh, powerful tools when you need to capture regularities without a strong theory and where you have a set of variables that are not going, where the data generating process is more or less um, uh, well defined. Again, recognizing faces is, is a good example of that. Um, they have the limitations. Um, but they are uh, very effective for lots of cases where you don't, you don't know ahead of time what the rules are by which it operates, but you can, you can capture uh, features of the process, um, say classification effectively. A good example of this, which applies to the work you've seen this week, would be for UN's problem. Remember that classification of tweets that first day? That's a good example of a problem where we don't need to have a lot of theory for how that works. The data generating process might change, but slowly. And deep learning approaches for parsing, for doing classification of text is uh, a successful approach in other areas. So one of the areas where I'd like to take her work is trying a deep learning, or at least a connectionist approach, an artificial neural network, which is not necessarily as deep as a deep learning environment, to try to classify tweets. That would be a good example of something that I think is a good match for that sort of problem. It would be a terrible match to use it for the sort we've just seen with measles or chicken pox, because you can't examine effectively counterfactual regimes. And you're not getting the advantage of a mechanistic model that aspires to causal pathways, is one of the key reasons why. We haven't had a chance to talk about it. I was really hoping very much to do so. CCM is an amazing approach. Um, it's one we put a lot of effort into with great effect. The first time we offered this, it was a big module in it. Um, I decided to pare it down this time, and I'm not going to be able to say more than a few words about it. But suffice it to say, it leverages the theory of embedding this notion um, of being able to reconstruct a shadow manifold from delayed uh, versions of a time series to recognize causal relationships between variables. And I will probably say a few more words about that in a few minutes, because I think it's worth knowing about. For filtering methods, I talked about particle filtering, um, and I made reference to Coleman filtering and PMCMC. So if you want to understand the underlying distribution of system state over time, in light of the model and one or more time series, um, and you want to keep it aligned as data comes in um, to project forward, examine impacts of interventions. This is like classic filtering area. Um, if you're dealing with discrete state, hidden Markov models are a good tool. 
An example in Brianna's case, if you're dealing with an underlying Markov model, um, for certain needs, a hidden Markov model might be a very good match. Um, I would fur further say you can do hidden Markov models with MCMC estimation of parameters, which is, gives an understanding of parameter values and their possible variation. Xiaoyan has offered to talk um, in some detail. She's out of the room right now, but uh, I said she'd be available tonight. Uh, if, if you're interested in talking about that. If you're dealing with continuous state, not categorical states, like are broken out in a, it was here, um, in a, uh, in a way, you know, a markup chain, but if you're dealing with states, you know, more susceptibles or fewer susceptibles, more infectives or fewer, more, in, more uh, exposed or fewer, more higher values of log C or less. If you're dealing with continuous state of an underlying system, Particle filtering and MCMC are your tools. Those are your tools of choice. If you need to estimate or uh, that are parameters that are plausibly or clearly static, PMCMC is your tool. If you don't really need to do that and you're dealing with parameters that can, you can approximate reasonably as varying, particle filtering could still do a good job, like uh, Shalyan's examples. Um, it, can, it can do a great job. Um, and if you're willing to calibrate those parameters to arrive at a point estimate, you can do calibration with, um, with uh, uh, particle filtering um, and optimization. So that can be uh, effective. Um, Coleman filter is an earlier technique. I don't recommend it, particularly with nonlinear systems. Uh, it's it's uh, problematic. I can talk about that afterwards if people are interested. Estimation methods. Calibration estimates parameter values governing the system in light of data. They're point estimates. You can calibrate to multiple types of data, cross-sectional and time series data. It may require many realizations for parameter combinations if it's a stochastic model, and it provides point estimates um, for most calibration mechanisms. MCMC samples from a joint distribution of parameters. It's much more powerful than calibration, but it's, it's much more uh, intensive as well. It's not advised for stochastic models for which you really need PMCMC. Um, in principle, you can sample from, um, from multiple models, okay? Um, and this is one of the places we're going. You can use MCMC to tell you which model is to be preferred or, or has a certain probability associated with it. So those are some comments on method selection. I apologize for the brevity, but hopefully they give you some points of reference in choosing an appropriate, uh, an appropriate method uh, for, for problems uh, of interest. My thought would be to now talk a little bit about CCM, but are there any questions I, can ish I could answer about this, about these techniques before I switch over? By the way, I have provided these slides, so you're, you're welcome to, to use the slides, too. Yes? If you can just briefly comment, um, I understand that you can use these methods for forecasting as well as yeah. backcasting. Backcasting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Did the, would the models perform equally well for forecasting and as well as backcasting, or is? Very good question. The answer, so I wish Xiaoyan was here because she, she, she has great knowledge and, and skill in this area. She has gung fu. She, she, knows, <laughs> she understands um, it at a deeper level too. I would say that, she, that, um, that it's quite different actually. And the reason I think it's, one of the reasons I think it's quite different, I'll just choose one example is that with forecasting, you are operating in a context where there's no data by definition of any sort to really guide you. If you're, for, if, if you're looking forward in the future from the current point, um, you don't have any option to have data to pin down the model going forward. Um, and that's, that is a sticky wicket. I mean, that, that's a tough, Thing to deal with. As they say, forecasting is hard, especially about the future, right? Um, and the reason it's hard is you have zero data to operate with. Backcasting 
Um, you, you have, first of all, you have some data in the past that may have informed you during past periods, even if it's less, even if it's you know, aggregate data that later was sharpened to be stratified data. But, but more significantly yet, or at least e equally significantly, the particles that have survived till now um, have been informed by many subsequent data points. And you can backcast and have something far more accurate than what you would have arrived at using only data to that earlier point. And that backcasting takes advantage of a whole swack of data you have historically in a way that's much more grounded, I would say, than forecasting. So I could imagine easily, and I, I think if, if you were to press me to the wall, I could probably within an hour show you, you know, a couple models where you could backcast more far with far greater clarity than you could forecast. Do you remember that model I showed? It was it was unimpressive in terms of its forecast performance. Um, even with both data sets, but this model of H1N1 influenza where we had fear and, and, and pathogen, as I said, it could be tuned up, but um, the fact is that it quite, it really didn't have very good forecasting performance in the absence of data, even when it was informed by both data sets. But it was much better with both data sets than either, and I said, vastly better. But that model backcasted could probably give you a wealth of information um, uh, because the particles have been honed by the data. So I think backcasting and forecasting are quite different in terms of their demands, their needs, and their uh, vulnerabilities for a model. So I, I, I believe they're in different spheres when it comes to whether a model will do well in one or both. Um, now you might further press me and ask, could a model, if you have model A that's better at forecasting the model B. <laughs> Does it follow that model A is better at backcasting the model B? And I don't have a clear intuition on that. Um, I, I, I suspect it would actually depend a lot on what data you have historically. You know, if you have lots of data historically for the backcast, at least recently, maybe you can backcast better with model B, even though it's less able, it's able to let forecast less. Well, I suspect that's the case, but uh, I don't, I don't have a really solid intuition with that, and I'd want to think about it. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, I think this back idea of backcasting, that it's hard to overexpress how cutting edge this stuff is. We're talking about here again, like people using PMC in health in you know, health models uh, with dynamic models. I think we're among, you know, maybe, maybe there's five other people doing something worldwide, maybe one other, <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost zero. Um, with backcasting, that's an incredible novel idea that very few people are doing because almost no one's, there are very few people doing particle filtering by itself and backcasting requires Nothing more than particle filtering, but you have to have a piece that people don't normally have with particle filtering by itself, which is the ancestry matrix. We got our aha moment in that because I was doing particle MCMC, and I said, wait a minute, I, I can do this for particle filtering. I don't need to do this only for PMCMC. I could record the same information for particle filtering. And that is true, and mathematical statisticians kind of knew that. But in terms of applied practitioners, I don't know anyone who's doing it. And therefore, the future, like Saskatchewan, is wide open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cheryl knows that, 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 that slogan. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Other questions? Questions? Okay. So I'd like to comment on, on CCM, because CCM is very close, ladies and gentlemen, to my heart. Um, it's also cl close, if I could, to my wallet, because we've been paying students to work on this to advance this technique, because I'm betting on it. This is one of the horses that I've got in the race, and it's one sleek, 
fast horse, okay? CCM, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, CCM. So I'm going to stop this recording that I just gave for